Hey everybody, I'm Sean Hammond with PremierGuitar.com. We're here in Aarhus, Denmark at TC Electronic and we're going to step inside and take a look at the factory and some of the cool stuff they've got going on. So we're here inside TC Electronic. We've got Tor Mogensen here. Tor, how's it going? Excellent. Good. Thanks for coming here. Yeah, we're happy to. It's yeah. been a great trip. So here's the lobby. What should we take a look at first? Well, I think maybe you should check out the old trophy case over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Actually, it's from, from way, way back. I see three that I think are probably the most important here. Uh. <laughs> they got the top spot right here. So yeah, you got those from reviews we did of the Polytune and the RH450 and the Nova the series. Nova series. Hopefully more to come. <laughs> we'll <laughs> see. But yeah, the trophy case and then right in the middle here, which I think is kind of fun for you guys. These are actually some of the very first pedals we did. Um, Back in the 80s, right? Back in the early 80s. Yeah, I remember uh, those as a kid. So the, uh, that's one of the very first production model Chorus Flanges, which is the first pedal we did. Um, and there's even a couple of prototypes down here. We don't make a lot of these anymore. We do make the Chorus Flanger here. Um, and we actually make it in-house, so you'll get to see the production. All right, Tori, so we're heading down here to the production line, right? We've got yeah. racks of PC boards all around us. Different stuff to easy to grab and, uh, and start making products with. So if we Get in here. So this is kind of where everything begins. Exactly. Um, and in fact, we do have some of our production in Thailand and some of it here. Okay. So depending on what products it is, some of it will be made here and some of it will be made in, the, in, the, in Thailand. So okay. typically, whenever we do products that we don't sell as many of, we'll do them here. Okay. Because Thailand, is, they're really good at making stuff in, in large products, whereas we can do shorter runs here and we can do them much faster. Okay. So the Thailand stuff, is that like all the... The pedals, yeah, the pedals, the tone prints, yeah, and exactly. Stuff. Nova pedals, um, but for example, the uh, original uh, SCF pedal we did, we saw up here, mm -hmm. is done here. Um, G Force is done here. Is it, yeah, I actually have a rack yeah. of the pedals you were just talking about yeah, over exactly. here. Yeah, We do an awful lot of different stuff apart from just building guitar pedals. So we do high-end uh, broadcast stuff for TV stations right. and stuff like that. So if we get a large order of say, you know, 40 or 50 of these for Chinese TV or whatever, mm -hmm. we can build those, build those really fast and have them tested. So that's what you see here, for example. And we have all the internal test equipment here as well. For that. So the stuff being built here at these individual stations is everything from um, guitar rack gear yeah. to um, like the G Factory, I mean, G Force yeah. Yeah. <laughs> stuff, and yeah. then studio processors. Studio processors, we also do uh, Blacksmith, our high end uh, base, base, uh, base head. Yeah. So the big, big one, 1500 watt one, is built here as well. So it's different okay. things. So down here, this is like a That's whole battery of tests, of different kinds of yeah. tests for the circuits, right? You want to yeah. explain what happens first? Well, basically, we have different oh. test cabinets. So we have some heating test cabinets. Um, and we have some that basically run through some different test programs. So every single product we do has a hidden mode inside mm -hmm. that you can access. And once you do that, then it can basically run through a sequence of stuff that tests whether the uh, pots, if it's a pedal or something like that, can go to the to the uh, to the values that and you the want it to go. Um, uh, it can check whether all the LEDs are okay, if something's broken, or you know, basically anything. And you have audio running through as well, so we can test whether the audio is actually mm -hmm. fine. Um, we which, can which one happens first? Uh, basically, we do all the programmed stuff about you know whether the pots and the LEDs work fine first, mm -hmm. and then we can actually we can heat them up and check whether it works fine if they're. And is that this one? Uh, that's this one over this there. This one, okay. So there, it's different things for for the different. And basically, what we have over here are then things you can mount in so that certain you know certain parts fits into the smaller ones down here, and certain parts fit into the bigger ones. So these are like rack modules. Exactly, exactly. Are, are these more of the like broadcast yeah. stuff that goes yeah. in here? Yeah, okay. exactly. And then down here, what do we have? Oh, let's see here. This is the heat. Unit, this the right? heat. This the heating thing. So you put them in here, and this goes up to. I can't remember how hot it gets actually. Um, I think they said earlier like 50, 50 degrees yeah, Celsius 50, or yeah. something, which Fahrenheit. I don't know what that's oh. Fahrenheit. That's I think uh, they yeah. said it is close to like 150 degrees. Yeah, uh, uh, someone's going to have to. Yeah. Someone's going to correct me. They're going to get online yeah. and look at the difference. But it's hot. Okay. Oh, that's going to be like a little <laughs> sticker in front of this right now saying it's actually 160 Fahrenheit. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, but it gets. It's not like we're not trying to melt the products here. We're just trying to right. get them like this is the most heat 
you could possibly expect. So if you're doing like a gig in the middle of the Sahara Desert, then yeah. you know it's not going to be much more hot than that. Well, and someone was saying earlier, you guys are actually doing a lot of new work in Dubai with clients yeah, there exactly. for some of your yeah. broadcast yeah. and pro audio stuff, and it obviously gets pretty it hot. It gets there. pretty hot, and the other thing is, of course, that. One thing is how hot it gets outside if you're standing in the baking sun. Yeah. But if you have something in a rack space, yeah, and in with clothes, a bunch of others, it so. can actually get a lot hotter than that. Yeah. So, so obviously we need to test for that as well. After you put the stuff, the rack units in here and subject them to high temperatures, yeah. the computers go through and analyze which part of the exact component in the circuit that is failing. Is exactly. That right? So if we see something that's wrong, or you know, something that doesn't act up the way that we want it to or fails completely, we can see it here. And we have different softwares for different products. So, for example, right here, you can see the little icon for the G-Force. So you'd run that program for the G-Force that's in there mm -hmm. because then the, the system knows that that's, you know, that's the circuit layout and the input and output configuration that uh, for that particular product mm -hmm. because it changes, obviously, for every single one. So if something fails or one part is maybe it has t only two leads on it and it somehow got put in backward or something it will tell you exactly where it is you don't have to go around with a bunch of no, probes no, no. and see you which will, you'll know everything you can just take it back to the line desolder it yeah put it in right and exactly so it makes it a lot easier and obviously handy. we we do the same thing in, in thailand as well but uh, mm -hmm. it's just necessary to make sure that that everything works properly after the battery of tests and those uh, racks with the heat and the circuit yeah. analyzers and stuff everything comes in here to anders and you check all the stuff that a machine can't really yeah, test yeah, out, right? That, yeah. So uh, we're testing yeah, all so the products from an, from an audio point of view here. So I'm hooking up to my test equipment and controlling that it communicates with the products that it should mm -hmm. digitally, panel, and the knobs are working the way they should. Going no to the proper yeah. maximum and minimum points? And yes, something like that. And uh, well, uh, as for the floor products, the, the pedals, we knock them around a bit to check that they can take some beating. And because, because, because everything we can as well as we can, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so everything um, that comes in here, you whack on this table. Well, uh, not the more expensive stuff. <laughs> <laughs> or the stuff that will probably break the table. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Tor, so in here you guys have a, a whole recording mm -hmm. setup. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've our background, apart from starting by making pedals, we actually moved into focusing mainly on studio stuff for a long, long time, mm -hmm. and then we got back into pedals. But uh, we built the studio when we were like big into doing rack stuff and mm -hmm. uh, reverbs and things like that. So we have a really neat studio here. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit in shambles right now. We used to have some really nice Monroe speakers here that mm -hmm. like cost a fortune but sound amazing. And uh, if you ask politely, then our studio guy will actually set it up so you can hear amazing records in 5.1 on some of the best speakers and in the world, which is kind of nice. Now it's 7.1, right? Yeah, it is. Crazy. Just because we can again and we yeah. have a lot of speakers. Oh, they will actually back there. Yeah. But um, yeah, and we have some different rack stuff here. Of course, some of our own and uh, some competitors' things as well. Uh -huh. um, My favorite is this dude. Have you been explained what it is? Sort of. Okay. <laughs> It's basically a test to, to do um, 3D, <laughs> 3D um, audio. So mm -hmm. what you want to do is actually be able to project um, audio from, a, from an array of speakers mm -hmm. and actually project them into individuals. So you can use it in different applications. So imagine, just for the fun of it, that you had, like a, you had a conference and you had uh, five people sitting in chairs next to each other and you wanted to project different uh, translations. So you have a French guy, German guy, and, and American guy, whatever. Um, and you could actually, using that array, you could throw a translation in, in English to the American guy, you could throw a French version to the guy sitting right next to him, so you can actually project audio that way, we use that guy for, for testing. That's stuff cool. Like that, so there's uh, microphones in the ears. And the uh, XLRs in his shoulders. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's Bionic Man! <laughs> <laughs> so, the next part that we're going into is where, this is where the bass stuff is done, right? Yeah, exactly. And you can kind of say that we have, uh, we have a couple of different areas. So, all the guys that are in here are working only on bass amps. Mm -hmm. um, and this actually used to be the very secret hidden place. This is where the engineers sit and mm -hmm. not even uh, guys from TC could go in here. Only the engineers and a couple of other guys should have to like code. <laughs> we opened up a little bit since then, so <laughs> you could actually walk in here as well, but uh, actually usually there's no outsiders allowed in here at all, uh, because this is where all the new products are. We're not going to make friends or anything uh, else. You might. I'll pick up the Vaseline okay. and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like 
vary the function varies from one end of the room to another like down here we have yeah we have software over here software developers yes. at one end of the room yeah. and then is this design over here uh, this is hardware and hardware over here as well which all the way down here and right down below you can see you are our design guy if you at the very all end the way back there and next to him is Carsten who does all the layout for the PCBs okay now I heard this was kind of a mess before we got here. You had to clean up your room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that because yeah, yeah. of mess or is, just because yeah. you guys are uh, so into your work that I like think you the, don't have time to clean up? I think it's the last thing. <laughs> I <can do> <laughs> <laughs> and because it kind of looks nice and, and engineering mad professor like, I guess. Yeah. So yes, what's going on here? Well, usually we have a lot of uh, setups going on on our, on our desks here. And uh, what I've ha had is usually a PCB set up like this. With uh, this is actually some of the stuff inside the, the, the current amp that we've been working on, or the, actually the current amp that we are working on, uh, with the with the main board, the UI, and some debugging stuff, so I can connect this stuff to my computer, and then uh, I can develop the software directly on target here. Uh, usually, we do a lot of simulations on uh, on the PC as well, and uh, here I have the, my audio interface, so I can connect this to the amp and do a lot of measurements while we're developing, so we can. Um, do a lot of testing on the on the algorithms and the uh, and the effects and the, and the device and the sound as well. And they only give you like an hour to figure each problem out. That's why you got the, the hourglass. Yes, the hourglass <laughs> is a is a whole story in itself. So uh, yeah, get that another <laughs> time. All right. Uh, and um, what we have for for this product is actually that we had to make a, a device like this to scale down the. This is uh, you see there's a speaker input here mm -hmm. and. Uh, XLR out, so it's a kind of a DI box. Only it, uh, it takes the speaker. Like a dummy load. So yeah, it's kind of dummy, dummy load for for doing the actual testing on the output of the amp. Okay. Yes, but um, but Johan, uh, my buddy over there, and I, we uh, we do uh, yeah basically all of the of the software for the amps, uh, both the DSP part, uh, the the effects implementations. Uh, and uh, also the, the housekeeping. We have a housekeeping processor on board as well to do all the UI stuff and all that. And we do all the programming for that as well. And we do uh, also a lot of uh, uh, PC and Mac software for uh, testing, uh, basically uh, mostly for testing the device. But lately we've been also done the, uh, the tone print uh, updates for the uh, okay. base amps. So uh, yeah, we get to do a lot of fun stuff here. Yeah. Cool. Hey, I'm Lars and uh, I'm doing hardware stuff. And um, the recent products that we have we've made is, of course, as you saw on the Frankfurt show, uh, the combo uh, BG250 to uh, 250, and uh, stuff that we put into that is is stuff like this. This is what I'm doing. Uh, PCBs, as Jens was using, and uh, that goes into something like this. Nice and tidy. Yes. Not that much stuff going in there. Um, only three PCBs, and I've been part of the um, the chassis design as well. This is made in uh, in China, and we uh, recently we have been doing a lot of work trying to get productions up and running. So that's uh, that's mainly what what's going on right here, um, and then on to the next projects that we do. Cool. Uh, based on, on the same same platform. Okay, so here we've got Michael. Michael, what's your actual title? Uh, I'm the program manager for this uh, ad team. Okay, so here we've got <laughs> massive wires that looks like C3PO blew up. <laughs> uh, what is this? This is uh, the uh, temperature test for the, uh, the BT250. So what we have here is uh, the actual unit, and all these green wires. You have a uh, thermal sensor at the end of each wire, and what you can do is that we can track all the uh, the temperature inside so we have these temperature sensors all over the place so we know exactly what's going on inside the product and then we'll cycle the product with the various signals and after that we can see what gets warm is there anything we need to change make sure that it operates at a good uh, and solid temperature so that's what we do here and then there's another testing process that's even just as hardcore outside. We're going to go check it out. Yeah, we'll right. go down. This is the testing of uh, long-term testing. So what we do here is that we test the amplifier and we test the whole product. So what I have uh, behind me here is uh, amplifiers. That is uh, 
being run uh, with dummy loads. Instead of uh, a speaker, we have a resistor load instead. And then we'll be running those at um, max power and the third power. Uh, so we can find out how it actually stacks up for long term. And these have been running for eight weeks or something like that now. So it's, uh, it's actually been running for quite a long time. On top of yeah. And this is just for bass amp stuff, right? This is right? just for bass amp. So this is, uh, this is the torture chamber for all the, all the bass amp stuff. So the behind this door. Behind there is, is a door. And then the. That's a bass player locked in there for a few weeks at a time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is the bass player. Now, <laughs> what do we have here? What we have here is uh, two bass amps. These two have been playing for something like six weeks now, 24 7. And what we are testing here is the overall product to see if anything goes wrong. Uh, and right now they're playing out of phase, so it's not, uh, it's not too loud. If I switch them over, you can uh, actually hear them being louder. So these stay in here for 60 days, you said? Six weeks. Six, Six weeks. weeks. And they'll continue to stand here until something breaks down, and we'll analyze what breaks down. You guys have another, yet another, yet another. <laughs> testing area here. Tell us what's going on in this contraption. Yeah, this is the, uh, the climate chamber where we uh, can do tests where we can cycle temperature from minus 20 degrees Celsius and up until plus 50 degrees Celsius. So what we'll do here is we'll take the products in here and then we'll test them, go, take them down in temperature, then we'll take them back up, maybe add some moisture in the process and so we'll make sure that any condensation or anything like that doesn't break the product. So we can do this. Sometimes you'll do this uh, maybe 20 times in order to find out if anything breaks when you cycle the temperature. So this is another stress test. And does this happen with every single product you guys do? Uh, this happens with every single design we do, yes. That's what we do. So okay. we make sure that things really work out well. All right, Michael, so we're in <laughs> test number 12. Uh, <laughs> we've got this, like, looks like a bomb shelter. Yeah. This What's th this called again? This is a, uh, an EMI-proof room. So this mm -hmm. will means that no radio waves could get in here. When we close the door, your cell phone will die. So you can't even make a call in mm -hmm. here. So what, what we have out of that is that you can test the product and make sure that you have all the... Uh, the EMI shielding done r proper so that you don't have a product that is uh, interfering with other products mm -hmm. afterwards. So this is only for EMI testing yeah. alone. Do you have any employees you have to send in here sometimes because they can't get any work done they're always on their phone? Yeah, and, it, and, and that makes them cool down. Yeah, it works pretty, pretty well. Now we're in the guitar department, right? Yeah, this is guitar department. So this is where I hang out a lot when I'm not in marketing. Um, and right now we actually cleaned out a lot of our stuff. We used to have a lot of amps and stuff in another mm -hmm. place and we're moving that. So right now it's kind of in, in storage right here. Um, and yeah, if we go down here, we can see the entire guitar team, even though it's a little bit deserted today. Because um, they're recovering from Music Mess. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> they were all down at Music Mess, actually, yeah. so they are. Um, so we have hardware, we have software guys down here, uh, design and testing. Yeah. So everything that's done guitar-wise is done right here. And just on that point about Music Mesa, it's been two days since Music Mesa. Exactly. And it's Saturday and you know everyone had to get home. So the people who are here are just hard extra guys. super <laughs> hardcore <Yeah>. dudes. <laughs> Nikolai, so what are you doing here? Well, I'm doing uh, mechanical design and uh, industrial design. So that's all the mechanical parts of the, mm -hmm. of the pedals. From uh, the windows and polytune to the aloe mechanical parts. Pretty fun? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I understand you guys are working on something super secret. Yeah, we always are. <laughs> That's right. We won't ask. I know you'd have to kill us. <laughs> we would. <laughs> All right. So uh, anything else you want to tell us about what you do? or? Well, uh, aside from designing, I'm doing all a lot of testing every time we have a sample of uh, of a part for for product we do testing of the quality and so you source the actual component and then you how do you test it well we have that that depends on what we're uh, what we're going to test but we it's right now I'm testing windows uh, for the polytune and polytune mini mm -hmm. to see if they comply with the quality standards do um do you like use a hammer yeah, so sometimes we do. Yeah, sometimes we do, actually. Uh, e extreme test stuff. Well, someone showed us, is it that piece of wood with the duct tape around it that we saw in another room earlier? Well, that's Anders doing the, uh, the testing room. He's just oh, that was oh, Anders oh, tool. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, and doing, doing uh, um, this, this is an SLS uh, 
the 3D printed prototype of uh, of the polytune. So this is way back from before you release the polytune. You're, exactly. you're not redesigning the polytune exactly. or anything. Exactly. So we have like, and also uh, the tone print pedals. We had done like uh, 3D models of that to assemble it and test that everything works as it as it should. Okay. Cool. So Christian, you do what again? Software for uh, pedals mainly. Okay. And it's uh, signal processing. That's that's the, the typical work for me. We yeah. are. We are four guys doing that kind of work mm -hmm. here. The others are in a meeting right now. So um, you've got dual screens of programming doom here. What <laughs> what languages do you guys usually use for your um, software? Uh, C, C++, and um, some assembly too. Okay, so Mike is not here right now, but we have uh, we have a guy who does nothing but testing the products mm -hmm. in the user sense. Mm -hmm. So this is not all the hardcore tests you saw outside with right. banging on products or sapping them or whatever. This is actually just finding out do they work, what happens if we the press. The sound sound right. Do they sound right? Do they behave right if you press certain buttons? Sometimes mm -hmm. when you do the program, it's like you can get the product in a state where it's not supposed to be, so we've got to yeah. make sure that that doesn't happen. So he's supposed to find the most bizarre ways of using he something. He's using stuff in, you know, every single bizarre way you can yeah. think of. All the stuff that you wouldn't do as a normal user, pressing every single button at <laughs> once all the time and, and things like that. And he's really good at that. So, And it's great to have a guy that focuses on nothing but that. So, And we can do an iteration. So as soon as we have some software ready or some hardware ready, we can start doing testing. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, here's the final product. Go figure it out and then you go back, oh, shit, these things are wrong. So we do that all the time. Cool. Are there certain things at this station here that you know are like, just the most important tools for him here, or is it? Uh, I mean, he does quite a bit of computer stuff with sending files through, obviously. But you know, I think the, m the most important thing is just that he's the most meticulous guy. Mm -hmm. So he will literally go through every single conceivable detail of how he can use it and document it. So, All right. and he just listens to it through headphones, yeah. I imagine, because yeah. he would probably yeah. get obviously. murdered if he was blaring stuff. Exactly. Ahead, obviously, so. we do test as well for you know hooking it on just two pedal boards and yeah. just pedals that we do to make sure that they don't make noise and stuff like that. But but most of it is, is done with headphones. Okay. So one of the really cool things about working here at TC Electronic is you guys have this amazing well kitchen. You yeah. Employees get breakfast and lunch. Exactly. We don't have to do anything. And people pay a pretty reasonable fee every month to be able to come in and eat breakfast and lunch and just a great variety of stuff. We we sampled it today. It was really good. And then afterward, uh, you got a cool break room here. Yep. And you got, and of course, important, of course, the most important place. Foosball. Foosball. And somebody broke it. We have oh. one, one loose handle. That's really annoying. So they yeah. were taken to the base testing chamber for punishment. Yeah, for, right? yeah, exactly. For a week. And the thing is, it's dangerous. We have this table for like five, six, seven years now, and there are some guys out here. You don't want to. You don't want to. You will get hustled by those guys. If you play. I don't play enough, unfortunately. But there's some really good guys playing here. And Friday, there's bar every Friday here. Nice. Um, which is nice, of course. Um, get to hang out. No taps, huh? No taps, unfortunately. <laughs> it would be nice. But usually, we have a lot of guys traveling here, so usually you know, somebody will bring some weird liquor home. So there's like weird Chinese stuff and things you don't really want to taste. Which <laughs> once, you, once you break out when all the beer is gone, it's like, oh shit, what's left to drink? Nice. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. So that was actually Nikolai. You met up, up at the guitar room. Okay, yeah. So I don't know. They got drunk one night and <laughs> they do. But I think they got something wrong because they yeah, the direction of the, the pipe. Yeah, the way wrong. <laughs> So, okay, so the last thing we're going to check out here is the rehearsal space. Oh, yeah, if I can get on a key. Yeah, it's open. So. so, this is where you take all the bass gear exactly. to see to actually sit and listen to it yeah. blare instead of having it in that isolation. Uh, trailer thing outside. Yeah. So, for example, with the uh, with the blacksmith, which is this fifteen hundred watt beast, yeah. we did a test for the uh, for the matching cap to see how mm -hmm. much power it could hold. So it's like turning it up full blast and just playing for a couple of hours until you know everything was rattling. And the unfortunate thing is, right of crosses is the whole administration. So they were <laughs> cursing that thing. It's like we can't work here. But you do what you got to do, I guess. You guys have gone to great effort to make it look like a real rehearsal space. There's. 
Not really yeah. enough beer bottles yeah. or we just need We just need a drummer to lie to you and sleep because he <laughs> got evicted from his apartment and stuff like that. Okay, so Tor, what do we have in this room? This is internal sales, so basically we have a setup where we have a bunch of, uh, of sales guys in Europe that sell nothing but our stuff, so we don't mm -hmm. have distributors. We do, but not in the most of the European countries. So whenever they have an order from a dealer, they phone it in here, and then we have uh, internal salespeople that talk pretty much every conceivable language known uh -huh. to mankind. <laughs> and uh, when people call in, I understand there's like a, it tells you where the country, what country they're calling from so that the right person knows to exactly, answer, Exactly, right? so it just goes straight to the person who knows that language. Cool. Um, then and then behind that door, we have uh, support, so even more different languages being spoken in here. Uh, so these guys basically do all the support for us, so if you call in, or okay. if you write on our support website, you will get in touch with one of the guys here. So Christian is over there. Basically what we do is we, we do tech support for all the products in the TC, um, TC Group portfolio for Europe. That could be anything from users who can't figure out how to use the Polytune to some of the big production systems that people need assistance with. So they usually write in or they call in and uh, we just have to, to get it to work. That's basically it. Cool. Got any horror stories you want to share? Horror stories? Well, there are some uses for perhaps a little bit more difficult than others. I think, I think one of one of one story that sort of springs to mind is an English guy who called in and he had a helicon pedal, and he said every time I turn it in, this horrible whiny high pitched noise comes out of the speaker. And I thought, okay, stop singing. I'll try <laughs> another singer or something. But you have to be polite sometimes. That can be a little difficult. <laughs> And of course, you guys have a whole FAQ site where yeah, people can go yeah, to, yeah. probably your number one message you want to send out to everyone is to actually go there and read it instead of just emailing you first thing, right? Yeah, exactly. First thing of all, if you, if you write to us, you'll get an auto-reply back with a link to some of the FAQs in it. Please check them out because they're not all nonsense. They actually, I think 98% of, of, uh, of the emails we get are actually entered through the FAQ system. So the last remaining percent, like 400 or 500 a week or something, is stuff that's not covered by the FAQs. So, yeah, please check it out. Cool, thanks guys.